Chapter 15, A Hot Island. General Eisenhower, who was a likable fellow, wrote in his diary in March 1942, one thing that might help win this war is to get someone to shoot King. He was kidding. The King he was talking about was Admiral King. They disagreed on strategy. Do you think wars are easy to plan? Do you think leaders all agree on how to go about it? Not often. Most of our leaders, military levels, leaders believe we should fight the war in Europe first and then win the war in the Pacific. That made sense. Splitting your fighting forces is never a good idea. Besides, we didn't yet have enough supplies for two regions. But Admiral King said, we couldn't just sit back and let the Japanese take over the Pacific. If we did, they would become so powerful that it would be almost impossible to win the war against them. When the Japanese started building an airfield on an obscure island in the Samoan island chain, Admiral King said that the United States needed to go on offensive. So far in Europe, in Pacific, we had been defensive fighters. King insisted that we take that island from the Japanese. It was an important decision. Not everyone agreed with it. It would cost many lives, American and Japanese. It turned out to be the best decision, decision that helped win the war. The obscure island was named Guadalcanal, and it was such an out-of-the-way place that no one even had a map of it, but it was the right spot for a war base. Find Australia on a map, then look north to New Guinea. To the east of New Guinea are the Sol Solomon Islands. Guadalcanal is one of the southernmost of the Solomons. Anyone who has an airbase on Guadalcanal can make big trouble for ships and airplanes going to Australia, New Zealand, or even Japan which was where the American military planned to go in eventually. We couldn't let the Japanese pull, put planes on that island. From the air, Guadalcanal looks like a heavenly place, very green with high mountains, thick forests, sandy beaches, and coconut palms, but Guadalcanal is intensely hot. Note the nearness of the equator. Its jungles are filled with Monster leeches, huge scorpions, poisonous centipedes, giant ants, writhing snakes, skulking rats, snapping crocodiles, and hungry un un unofulis, mosquitoes whose bites bring malaria. Most of Guadalcanal is tropical rainforest. Steamy, thick, muddy jungle where there isn't rainforest, there is kanai, grass, with stiff, soft tooth blades, often seven feet high. That can leave your arms and legs a mess of cuts. On Guadalcanal, you can't even see the enemy hiding in, in the grass or behind those jungle trees. The first Marine Division landed in August 1942. Marines are trained to fight on land or sea. The first Marine Division was specially trained and tough. They needed that toughness. Guadalcanal was one of the hardest fought battles in history. It went on for six months. It combined jungle fighting with terrible sea and ba air battles. At first, things seemed easy. The Marines surprised the Japanese on the island, who were mostly construction crews building an airfield. The Marines captured the airfield. They named it Henderson Field after the pilot who had been killed at Midway Island. To tell the story of what happened next would take a whole book. Here's some of it. Let's begin with the military word for mistake. It's snafu. A combination of letters for situation normal all fouled up. It means that someone goofed. Who goofed on Guadalcanal? Both sides. The pressure and fear of battle often lead to mistakes. 
One captain unloading Marines onto the beach didn't want to risk a Japanese attack on his ships, so he pulled out before the loading was finished, taking supplies and United States Marines with him. He stranded the Marines already on the island. That was just one of the goofs. The Japanese officers matched our snafus. They were too sure of themselves. They kept sending small forces to Guadalcanal. They thought Japanese fighters were unbeaten unbeatable. They thought Americans were not good fighters. They were wrong. In six months, the Marines and the Army units that came to fight with them lost 1,598 men on Guadalcanal. Japanese war records show an incredible 23,800 deaths. Many Japanese deaths came in suicidal charges. Surrender was considered shameful. The Japanese also suffered many deaths from tropical disease. Our medical care was much better. Most of the battle for Guadalcanal was fought at sea. Each side lost 24 big ships and many smaller ones. About 20,000 American and Japanese soldiers went down there with their ships. Here is a map showing a war in the Pacific. The first of the sea fights off nearby Savo Island was the worst disaster in United States naval history. We were whipped. After that, it was a seesaw of a conflict. conflict. The battles on the island were ferocious. The Japanese were a brave foe. They had not lost a war in 400 years, but the Marines outfought them. They held Guadalcanal. The Marines ended the myth that the Japanese were invincible. Guadalcanal was a turning point in the war. We went from defense to offense. The Japanese went from offense to defense. A captured Japanese document said, Guadalcanal is the fork in the road which leads to victory for them or us. We took the right road. It would lead to Japan. Here is Guadalcanal. Take a look at it, how they talked about New Guinea, Australia being afraid. If whoever controls this island controls this region, here we have Japan at this time. Take a look at all the red. This is all of the area that Japan has been aggressive over here in the Pacific.